Hey Life Designers, welcome to this week's episode of the vlog where we are going to continue exploring the blue zones, specifically the strategy of incorporating natural movement into your life. One of the common elements across all five of the blue zones is an incorporation of natural movement into daily activities. And it's believed that this natural movement is contributing to the longevity of the people who live in these blue zones. And it makes sense in a lot of different ways. You know, of course, physical activity is, is of course, always going to yield positive uh, benefits in, in some of the expected ways, reduced calories and, and cardiovascular fitness and, and things like that. But also in less kind of uh, obvious ways, such as increased sense of balance, uh, which is really beneficial uh, in later years, you know, 90s and 100s, when you, if you fall at age 100, it's typically uh, life-threatening. So the, the incorporation of natural movement is a really big element of the blue zones. Now, of course, in the blue zones, the, the lifestyles are organized such that activities like walking and and um, you know natural movement are are necessary you know we're talking about people who make a living through farming and foraging and hunting and it's just the way that they live based on where they live is uh, is rich with natural movement so the real question for for us is how do we incorporate this type of natural movement into our own lives in a way that's actually practical and and valuable so that's what we're going to be talking about here today so if you're interested in that then stay with us because we're going to jump right in so now one of the ways that i think is really beneficial to start to incorporate natural movement is through pure measurement. Uh, there was a time when it seemed like everybody was wearing a Fitbit or some other wearable device that tracked the number of steps. I don't see it as much anymore, but it, I'm sure that it's still common. I think this is a, a really tremendous way to increase your natural movement because as you are tracking your daily steps, there's this gamification that happens and you, you just challenge yourself to find new ways to, to get steps in. You'll take the stairs when otherwise you might have taken the elevator or you'll park at the other end of the parking lot instead of close, uh, parking close to the mall. I just think the act of measuring your physical activity is a really beneficial technique and if you if you have one of those fitbits and you put it away because <laughs> you're not interested in using it anymore maybe maybe bust that out or consider uh consider getting some kind of a wearable whether it be an eye watch or something that tracks your your daily movement in a way that you can uh, set some goals for yourself and achieve those goals on a daily basis so that's technique number one now, technique number two really involves reducing the barriers to getting in your physical activity. And I recently heard a podcast with The Minimalist, and they, and they interviewed a gentleman named Ben Greenfield, and he's a nutrition and fitness expert. And The Minimalists were asking, how do you incorporate physical fitness in a minimalist way? And it was a really really insightful podcast i thought i definitely recommend you check it out but what what ben greenfield talked about was he talked about the fact that nowadays for many of us physical activity is a an event it's a complex chore you know it requires specific equipment and it requires us to be in a certain place at a certain time of day and you know all of this kind of complexity just makes exercise a chore and as a result of that it's the first thing that is probably going to get lopped off when you become too busy or too tired uh, and you become constrained so the goal is to reduce the the you know the level of significance of getting the physical activity and really trying to get it throughout the day so what greenfield recommended was you know his goal is by the end end of the day to have done enough physical movement that exercising at the gym is optional, not required. And I, I thought that was a really cool way of looking at it. And he's got some, some techniques that he recommends that I think are pretty, are pretty useful. You know, one of the techniques he talks about is just putting a, a pull-up bar over your door. And then every time you walk past that bar, you know, knock out five pull-ups. Or if you can't do five pull-ups, just hang from the bar for five seconds. But the idea is you've got this low cost, about $30, piece of equipment and and you're walking underneath that door multiple times a day 
forcing you to kind of trigger yourself to do the exercise. Now, the reality is you don't need a, a, a pull-up bar. Uh, you can just do squats. You can just simply squat down and, and raise yourself back up and, and do that on a regular basis. So do that every time you every time you open Facebook, you have to do 10 squats. Or every time you are on a conference call, you have to do 10 jumping jacks. And the idea there is by the end of the day, you've done enough physical activity that you don't have to go to the gym. Now, of course, you still can go to the gym, but you don't have to because you've, you've worked in enough uh, activity throughout your day. Now, another, another t uh, piece of equipment that, that Greenfield recommends, which I think is a, a really great one to have around, is a kettlebell. It's a, basically a heavy weight with a, with a handle, and there's a lot of exercises that you can do with a kettlebell. The beauty of a kettlebell is that it takes up very little space. It, it, you know, it only takes up about um, you know, six inches, eight inches by eight inches on your floor. Um, and you can have one in your office, you can have one in your office um, at home or anywhere uh, in your garage. And, and you know, there's so many exercises you can do with a kettlebell very quickly and just get your body moving. You can simulate sprints, you can, you can do some really cool stuff with a kettlebell. And it's a, a low cost um, piece of equipment as well. And they make adjustable kettlebells that are, that are quite, uh, quite useful, quite flexible. So, uh, you know, just the idea there is to have something on hand that you can do any time as opposed to having to cart yourself across town for a particular class or to use a particular piece of equipment at the gym. Uh, so, you know, finding these kind of ways to reduce the barriers to physical activity is a way to get more natural movement into your life is just make it more a part of your day. So now the last technique that I'll throw out there is just the idea of, of chores and most of us try our best to eliminate chores from our life because they feel like work when we're at home <laughs> and I you know the the beauty of many of the chores that we have to do is they actually do have some physical um, you know exertion required uh, and you know so maybe uh, maybe having somebody come to mow your lawn is not the best thing. Uh, maybe, maybe uh, you know, doing your own lawn with a walking lawnmower can be a source of physical activity for you, and still get done something that needs to get done, um, and save yourself some money if you're paying for somebody else to do it. Uh, but the idea there is that you know, see see these chores as uh, as opportunities to get movement in your life in a in a natural way so then you don't have to go out of your way to to bake the natural movement in you know park at the far end of the of the parking lot at the grocery store and carry the groceries rather than push them in a cart you know get yourself a couple of plastic bags and and carry the the groceries um, and walk across the parking lot you know put some exertion into the chores that you're already doing um, you know this is definitely a, a way um, you know and you know landscaping and gardening is one of the activities in the blue zones that seem to be incredibly popular and really useful for people to uh, to get that kind of natural movement baked in uh, it requires full range of motion and uh, it's really quite useful so hopefully these ideas are giving you some some thoughts about how to incorporate movement so now hopefully this has given you some ideas about how to incorporate movement into your life as opposed to avoiding it <laughs> which is probably what most of us do uh, a lot of the time uh, there, there's really countless ways that you can get yourself moving more and and that really is the objective is to, to simply move more than you did yesterday and um, you know really start to kind of build yourself up to a point where where movement is a part of your life uh, and and you will then start to reap the benefits uh, in terms of your energy levels and in terms of just your overall physical well-being because when it comes to life design it really does start with your physical body if, if your body's not working nothing else in your life is likely to be working so uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this this deep dive into the 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 strategy of, of natural movement over the next few weeks we're going to be unpacking the other eight strategies that they offer in the blue zone book and uh, there'll be a link to the to the book down in the blog below if you if you don't uh, aren't familiar with that book i highly recommend it and uh, i look forward to our paths crossing again if you want to get these 
episodes kind of sent right into your inbox, go ahead and subscribe, and uh, you will get the weekly emails when the new episodes are available. So uh, with that, I look forward to our paths crossing again in the future, and I wish you all the best. Take care.